Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. Welcome back to Garden Haven Homestead. Today I'm going to be starting my last big batch of seeds for 2022 and I'm kind of going to go over both the vegetables and the flowers I'm going to be starting. Just for reference, we're actually only a few days out from our estimated last frost date. So these are all the things that germinate and grow very quickly, so I have waited until the very last moment. And these are all warm weather vegetables and flowers as well. So let me start with the vegetables and the first section I'm going to go through is cucumbers. So I have quite a few cucumbers that I'm going to be growing this year. I think I have eight varieties total. So the first one is the miniature white cucumber, which I've grown for the past two years. It's a really high production plant for how small it stays. This is a mini cucumber. They're good for pickling. And my plan this year is to try growing them in my green stock since the plants don't get very large. The next one that I have also grown before is the Chicago Pickling. This did okay for us last year, but it was our first year growing them and we didn't have like a super good cucumber year last year. So I'm going to be trying them again and again this is another pickling cucumber, so it's good for preserving. Next I have the Silver Slicer Cucumber. These ones get a little bit longer, it says 5 to 6 inches. These ones again did okay for us, but I'm giving them another shot to see if they do better for us this year. I also have a Marketer Cucumber. There's no picture on here, but this is a pretty standard cucumber, kind of like the slicing cucumbers you would get at the grocery store. I have another pickling cucumber. This one is Little Leaf from Johnny's. I also have these shorter Korean cucumbers. These look like they're not going to have a lot of seeds, which I really like in a cucumber. And then I also have the Suyo Long cucumber. I think this is a Chinese variety. It has a lot of like spines and they're usually kind of bumpy and get like twisty. But the thing that I like about them is that they have really small seed cavities. And then lastly, I have the Armenian Yardlong Cucumber, which is actually a melon, but you can grow it as a cucumber and eat it young. And these ones are supposed to get really long. So we'll see how those do. Those are new for me. So for cucumber seeds, a lot of people say that you should just direct sow them because their roots can be kind of sensitive. And usually I do direct sow them but the reason that I'm starting them indoors this year, there are actually a few. The first one is that it can help speed up germination because even though a lot of our days right now are warm, the nighttime temperatures are still in like the 40s, which is pretty cool. So these things might take a little bit longer to germinate if I just stick them directly into the ground. Another reason is that it makes it easier for me to kind of plan out my garden because if I have these seeds already germinated as starts, I can place them exactly where I want them to go versus if I direct sow, some of them might not come up and I'll end up with empty spots in my garden beds and then I have to go back in later and plant more seeds which is just an extra step that I don't want to have to do. And lastly, because if I start them indoors, I can keep a closer eye on them because I am really bad at remembering to water my plants, especially if they haven't come up yet because I can't remember exactly where I've planted all of these seeds. So if I just plant them in pots, I can monitor them until they germinate. And that way I am taking good care of my seeds until they're ready to go out into the garden. So the next section, which is melons, I'm gonna start with the sweet melons. And I have an orange watermelon which is a new variety for us this year that I'm going to be trying. And I think this is the only kind of watermelon that I'm going to try this year. But then I also have cantaloupe and honeydew. So I have this cantaloupe, honey rock cantaloupe. These did not grow for us last year. I think my plants died maybe from squash bugs because I think melons are afflicted by squash bugs. And then I also have this golden honey moon melon, which two years for us did pretty well. We got a few melons off of these. So hopefully between like the watermelon, cantaloupe, and honeydew, we get at least some kinds of melons this year. They're not the thing we're best at growing. We have kind of like average luck with them, but it is always fun to have homegrown fruit. So I will give those a go and kind of dedicate one bed to them and hopefully we will get a few melons out of that. Next, I have some vegetables that I guess are technically melons, but we eat them like vegetables. So the first one is this wax melon, which I often call a winter melon. We grew one really huge one last year. I think it was 30 pounds. I did cut that open in a video and it was really fun to grow something that big. 
The plants did take a little long to get like established. I kind of thought that the seeds weren't going to come up at all. So this is one that you kind of need to have a longer season for, which we do have. So I think that's why it did so well for us. So I am definitely gonna grow that again and probably just do one plant as well because these can get really large. I'm gonna let it grow over a cattle panel trellis and it will basically take over the whole cattle panel. So we're only gonna do one plant of those. I also have a couple other different varieties of winter melons. I don't know if they have exact names. I always get these seeds from my mom. So here are the seeds for another kind and we just call them round winter melons and long winter melons. I think I'm just going to grow one of those two varieties this year because in addition to these really big wax melons, if we get something off of this, we basically don't really need many other winter melons to get us through the winter because that is so much food. I am also going to be growing bitter melons. Here is what the seeds look like. If you've never had a bitter melon before, it tastes exactly like what it sounds. It is super bitter. They're honestly not our favorite thing to eat, but they are really good for you. And I always stick at least one or two plants in there. I'll just really thinly slice it and throw it in some stir fries or stuff so that we get those nutritional benefits. And I also grow them just in case I go like visit my parents or if they come visit us, I can give it to them because they really enjoy eating it. Bitter melon is one of those vegetables that's really popular in a lot of Asian cuisine. So if you grow up eating it, you might really like it. But if you are new to it, it does take some getting used to. So next I'm going to get into the squash and gourd section. I have two heirloom varieties and two hybrid varieties for zucchini and summer squash type vegetables. So the first heirloom variety is this gray zucchini which is just a pretty standard zucchini. And then I also have the yellow golden zucchini. I think I've only gotten a couple of squash off of each of these kinds of heirloom plants because our plants always get killed off by squash bugs. So I'm also hoping that starting these seeds inside earlier, they'll be a little bit more protected and be more established when they get out there and hopefully they can stand a better chance against the bugs. This year, I'm also going to be netting my entire squash row to keep the vine borer moths off because that killed all of our plants last year and we hardly got any zucchini and I don't think we got any winter squash at all. So I definitely want to give them a better shot this time and hopefully that netting helps. So the two hybrid varieties I have for my green squash, I have this Emerald Delight. And then for the yellow zucchini, I have Golden Glory. So I think I'm gonna do maybe one or two of each of these plants and I'm gonna compare hybrid versus heirloom and see which one does better, see if one has a better resistance to our bugs or diseases. So that'll be a fun little experiment. I also am going to try growing this Kakuzi gourd, which I have not grown before, and you can kind of eat it like a zucchini, but I think that squash bugs don't attack this. So I'm hoping that that does well for us and I believe this is one where you're gonna need like a pretty big trellis area. So this one, I think I'm also going to grow over a cattle panel trellis. I also have silk squash, also known as Chinese okra. These are seeds that I saved last year. I think these are related to lufa gourds, which I know a lot of people like to grow, but these ones we eat when they're young and tender and it's really good for stir fries and soups. And they are super productive for us. They do really well in hot areas and are pretty drought tolerant as well. So they're really easy to grow. Next, we're gonna get into the winter squash and pumpkins, which like I said, last year we had no luck at all with these because the vine borers got to all of them. We're gonna give it another go this year, hopefully covering the plants when they're younger, kind of keeps those bugs off of them, enough for them to develop some fruit. First, I have the honey nut butternut squash, which is like a mini butternut that has more flavor and each of these stays pretty small and these plants are supposed to stay pretty small as well. Next we have a spaghetti squash, just a pretty standard variety, like the ones you would get at the grocery store. I also have a delicata squash. I have tried these for two or three years now and the plants for some reason just never take. So I'm gonna give it one last go and if it doesn't go well this year, maybe I will just give up on this variety. Um, but I do really like eating delicata squash. It's one of the ones I like buying from the store. So it would be nice to be able to grow it. I also have this Korean seed packet. It just says round green pumpkin. So I don't exactly know what it looks like on the inside or really anything about it because the back is in Korean and I can't read it. Um, but we're just gonna try it and see what happens. 
We also have a Japanese pumpkin, also known as kabocha squash. And we did grow a few of these two years ago. Kabocha squash is like a really dry, flavorful pumpkin. So it's really good if you don't want like a watery pumpkin, if maybe you're gonna do like pumpkin puree. Kabocha squash is also used a lot in tempura and other Japanese cooking. And then lastly, I have this French name pumpkin. I think this one looks kind of like a Cinderella pumpkin and it's a little bit redder. And this one I'm mostly just growing for decorations if we can get them to grow. So all of these pumpkins, I'm probably just gonna grow one of each of them just for space reasons because pumpkins do take up a lot of space. And also because I don't actually know if they're going to grow. So I don't wanna dedicate like half my garden to them if the bugs are just going to kill them. Lastly, in the vegetable section, I have okra, and I have two varieties here. I have burgundy okra, which is what we've grown for the last two years, and I also have Clemson spineless, which is a pretty standard one, but we've never grown it. We've, also, we've always grown the red variety. Okra is a vegetable that does really well if you live in a really hot climate, and it's pretty easy to grow, but they do take a little bit to germinate for us, so I'm hoping that starting them indoors this year will give us a little bit of a head start. So that was plenty of vegetables, and I think in addition to all of these, another one you can try starting inside is beans. I usually direct sow my beans just because I have so many that I need to put out. So I won't be doing that today. And I find that they do grow pretty quickly. I'm just gonna wait a few weeks to plant those out and wait till it's a little bit warmer. That way they will germinate quicker. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of some of the vegetables you can start indoors in April if your last frost date is in April like ours is. Now I'm gonna move on to the flowers. So the first really big section of flowers that I'm going to be starting today are zinnias. And technically I could have started these maybe like four weeks ago because you can start these four to six weeks before your last frost date. I have just waited until now because I do not have enough space to have all of my vegetables that I currently have and also have like a full tray or two of zinnias which is how much I'm going to be starting today. So I waited until now because the weather is warm enough where I can kind of keep things outdoors in our unheated greenhouse. As long as temperatures don't drop below freezing, I just have to keep an eye on the forecast. Okay, so let me get started with these because I have a lot of different varieties of zinnias. First, I have the Envy Zinnia, which is a lime green zinnia. It's a really nice one that kind of goes with everything because it's green. It almost looks like a foliage plant. So it's nice to balance out a bouquet if you have like a lot of other colors going on. This green one is really nice to have. Next, I have a new one that I wanted to try out. This is a cactus blend. These petals are a little bit like more pointed than normal zinnias, which I think is really cool. Then I have meteor zinnias. These ones I've grown for a few years and the actual flowers get so big and they're really bright, bold red. So if you love red, this is a great flower for you to grow. I've noticed that hummingbirds and butterflies also really like these because hummingbirds are drawn to red flowers. So if you're trying to attract more hummingbirds to your garden, then this is a good one to try out. I also have a bunch of other varieties that I just have in Ziploc bags because I have saved them. So I don't necessarily have the photos of the seed packets of them, but I also have the Zinderella peach, which I really liked from last year. It has kind of like a cupcake shape where the center gets really tall. Um, and I like the peach tones of that one. I also have the polar bear zinnia, which is a white zinnia and kind of like the green one, it goes with everything. White flowers are always nice to have. I also have the California giants mix and also the Bannery giants mix, both of which are just like a mix of different colors and the flowers get pretty large. So next category are Cosmos. I have three varieties here. I have the Rubenza Cosmos, which is a nice burgundy color. Then I have the Xanthos Cosmos, which are yellow. Last year, these stayed really short for me, but that could have been just me. Maybe I stunted my plants. And then I also have the Seashells blend, which is really cool. The petals are kind of fluted. And these ones for me got really, really tall. I also have a couple of grasses. I have the frosted explosion grass, which I really loved from last year. It was really cool, kind of looks like fireworks. And then I have the bunny tails grass, which mine last year did not grow very well, so I'm going to give it another try this year. They're supposed to have these really soft tufts that look like bunny tails. 
I'm also going to be starting some sunflowers. I'm a little bit undecided as to whether or not I'm going to do sunflowers in my cut flower garden this year because in the past I have had a really bad issue with deer coming to eat my sunflowers which is really disappointing and I also don't want to grow stuff that is going to attract them to our garden. We might be setting up some deer netting to keep them out of there but until then, I don't think I'm going to start any sunflowers. But I do have one packet here that I'm going to grow and put in our vegetable garden and I'm just gonna kind of keep them a little bit closer to the house. So hopefully the deer won't eat them because sunflowers are just so great to have for the bees and also because I feel like it's not a summer garden unless you have sunflowers. So I have this evening sun mix of sunflowers which we've grown for a few years now and they're just so pretty. There's such a nice mix of colors in here and they are branching sunflowers so you get a lot of heads over a really long season. Sunflowers are one that a lot of people say again to direct sow, but I have started these indoors before and planted them out and they do really well. And it's one that you might actually want to transplant because sunflowers have a lot of different animal pests and critters that like to eat them both in the seed form and in the seedling form. Because as seeds, birds can peck them out of the ground and as seedlings, you can have rabbits or deer come and nibble on them. So if you start them indoors and then transplant them out, you give them a little bit of a better shot. I also might start some more straw flowers, which are another one that I could have started a few weeks ago. And I did start some of them, but they didn't germinate that well. So if I have space and time, I might also sow some of those. But anyway, those are all of the seeds that I'm starting today. It is a whole bunch of them. And like I said, this is probably going to be my last big batch of starting seeds for the season. I might go in later on to maybe like succession sow a few things, but this is like the last big push before everything is going to get put out into the actual garden, which is going to be a really fun and exciting time. So let's go outside and I'm going to start these seeds. Before I go outside, I'm just going to quickly plan out my seed trays. So what I'm sketching here is the type of seed tray that I'm going to use for my flowers and my vegetables. So whether I use seed trays or two inch pots, I know the number of cells or pots that can go in a tray and this way I can kind of plan out how many rows or pots I want of each variety of flower or vegetable. And that way I'll know if I have enough room for all of the things that I want to plant or if I need to adjust the quantity of anything. It just makes it a little easier when I go to pick out my pots. I'll know how many I need to clean and fill with soil and I can also gauge the total number of trays so I can make sure I have space for all of these things either under my grow lights or in my greenhouse. I also like to write out all of my tags at this point so that I can just stick them right into my pots once they're filled with soil. I can do this while my hands are clean. Now I just have to fill up my trays and pots with some soil. I'm using just regular potting mix here and I'm going to be using a 72 cell tray for my flowers and then for my vegetables I'm using individual two inch pots just because I only need one or two of each variety whereas for the flowers I'm going to do one or two rows of each variety. I did end up not having enough space for all of the varieties that I picked out, which is why I sketched out everything in the beginning to see how much space I would have in my trays for. So there are a few things that I'm just going to have to save for another day. So for the flowers, I ended up just doing zinnias, sunflowers, and cosmos. Some other things that I forgot to mention in the beginning that you can sow now if you haven't done them already are marigolds and nasturtiums and also amaranth. All of these things can be planted maybe like two to four weeks before your last frost date. And some of these things I have already started. So for those that I haven't, I'm going to plant them now, even though it's a little later than suggested, late is better than never. Most of the seeds that I'm planting today are on the larger side. So for my pots and my trays, I have just filled it up maybe like 90% full with soil. And then I've also gone in and made like a little bit of a dimple in each of them so that I have space to plant my seed and then still have room to fill it with a little bit of soil afterwards. Once everything is filled up, I like to go in and stick all of my tags into my prepared pots so that I can just like space everything out and make sure I have enough pots for each variety. And if I have any extras, I can do extras for certain things. And then when I go in to pop in my seeds, it's super easy. I can just go along my row of seed packets and find the corresponding pots and just plop them right in. I'm just gonna do them all right now. And then afterwards, I'm going to cover them with soil at the end. 
For each of my pots, I'm aiming for about two to three seeds for each of them and I'll just thin them out to one plant probably. Sometimes I do just leave two plants in a mound if I'm doing like pumpkins or squash so I'll just see how it goes and see how nice the seedlings are looking and I'll decide later on. These seeds that I'm showing you here are for the kukuzi gourd. I thought they were really interesting. They're a really unique shape. Once everything is popped into its cells, I'm just gonna cover it with a little bit of a sprinkle of soil. Unless a seed has special requirements, like if it has to be surface sown or if it needs light to germinate, which none of these seeds do, I really don't pay too much attention to like the exact depth of things. I just try and make sure that for these larger seeds, they're covered pretty well and I feel like the seeds usually just figure it out themselves. So I ran out of tags for my flowers, so instead I'm just going to run some tape along at the edge of my tray and since I'm doing full rows for each variety, it makes it a little bit easier for me to label. I can just label the entire row instead of having individual tags for each cell. Then I'm just going to do the same thing for my flowers, going along row by row and adding two to three seeds for each. I think pretty much all of the seeds that I'm planting today germinate pretty quickly. You should see germination definitely within a week if not within a few days. So they're really quick and easy to start from seeds. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a sprinkle of soil over those flower seeds as well making sure that they're covered. After everything is planted I'm just going to give everything a good watering in and now all we have to do is wait. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm really excited to see how all of these things do in the garden this year. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.